Hey there, friends and enemies. Joe Perez here once again, and I have a brand new Tiny Tina's Wonderlands video checking out the brand new update that just launched. I'm very excited for this because it does include Tiny Tina's Wonderlands first in-game mini event. So if you don't know, Borderlands does these all the time. I'm glad Wonderlands is continuing the tradition. I'm also super stoked that it's happening so quickly after Wonderlands has been released because oftentimes what I see in looter shooters and other ongoing games is unfortunately they wait too long to start doing these little events to get people excited about and for that reason it kind of slows down the excitement of the game. You want to do bug fixes and all that kind of stuff especially if there's some glaring issues but overall you definitely want to have these mini events lined up to get people excited to jump back in the game, maybe explore areas they otherwise wouldn't, all of that kind of good stuff. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, make sure to subscribe to the channel, it helps me out tremendously. And I'm gonna have loads of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands content, so make sure you hit the notification bell as well. I have build videos, I have underrated weapons, I might check out some of these new weapons that just got buffed as well. All of that, so definitely stay tuned. Also, we have a charity event through GCX and St. Jude Play Live. So you'll see at the top of the screen that I have my donation bar, which we just started the event. Uh, down in the description, you're going to see that I have a link with the incentives and the goals and all of that kind of good stuff. So definitely check that out. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you want to see me add any YouTube-specific incentives? Would that make you spread the word even more on this event because I definitely want to do the most that I can for this cause. Jumping into the patch, here are the notes. And um, the first thing that jumps out is obviously the weekly event. This is a weekly rotation, so it looks like there's going to be events every single week, which is obviously huge and it'll obviously provide a lot of value as you're exploring different locations. This one is going to be the optional opportunities and it's gonna be loot enemies showing up more often in Tangle Drift and Mount Craw. Again, I'm very excited about this for the reason that these are locations that are not visited through the main campaign. So if you haven't explored them, if you haven't found all the loot dice, if you haven't found all the obelisk enemies and all, and all that kind of good stuff, now is the perfect time to do so and get rewarded with additional loot as well. That's huge, and it's something that I hope they continue doing throughout uh, the, the life cycle of Wonderlands because these in-game events are very valuable, especially for people trying to play catch-up. Cast Chamber's featured run has been updated, and this run features a Parasite and the Pig War. I'm about to fight the Pig War here in Mount Craw right now for the rest of this video as I talk about why I like these events, but these featured runs are good as well because you can not only target farm the parasite and the pig wart on top of getting your standard chaos chamber loot so i feel like that's huge and allows you to to farm multiple types of enemies in different ways which is really good this is what i'm also excited about the balanced overall weapon damage scaling hyperius black powder and fairy or shotguns damage increase skull digger and the dahlia auto rifle or assault rifle damage increase uh Skullduggar was damage increased, Dahlia auto rifle damage decreased. So this might change up the meta a little bit on what guns are really useful and which ones are maybe going to fall by the wayside after this update. So I haven't used shotguns really at all in this game. I haven't liked them pretty much anyone that I've picked up. So this maybe will allow me to revisit that because in Borderlands 3, I really did love shotguns. Now, uh, a lot of these others are bug fixes. They've uh, updated some of the Spore Warden's Barrage. Uh, Spore Warden's Barrage now works properly with Clawbringer's Fireball and the one shot, slot, one kill. Um, punish Polly's bad behavior. Shouldn't push the Fate Makers to their deaths anymore, which is pretty funny. Uh, Ice Spike Spell has been adjusted to the damage to individual targets once per cast. We'll see how that affects it as well. And then some other patch notes here. Overall, pretty simple patch, nothing too crazy, but the mini event is really what I'm most excited about. And going through and checking out some of these enemies is also pretty fun because like, for example, the pig war is not someone who's that difficult of an enemy, but it's fun to, to mess around with these, these various enemies, try them out, see how you like facing them and all that kind of good stuff. And I don't know. I just like the way that Borderlands does it. You know what I'm saying? I like the way you can farm target enemies and 
really, you know what I'm saying, kind of play however you want to play. Like, these enemies are very rewarding as well, which is good because it allows you to, to repeat farm them and now I can continue on from here instead of just farming him. And maybe I, I whiff with that spell way too much. But it allows you to continue on and not just fight the pig war constantly and not go on and look for the other loot luck enemies, the other loot enemies that might be around. All right, now I'm gonna check out one of the new, well, the shotguns now that's been updated. Let's see how it works. This is one of the farrier shotguns. Looks like it's, oh, okay. So this is a le not a legendary, it's a purple one, but. If you have a companion build, I can see this being very useful. Not too great as far as full damage goes, but I also don't have it really specced for this type of gun, so we'll see how that goes. That said, it does seem like it's probably more useful now than it has been in the past, which is definitely a good thing. Let's check it out on some of these enemies. Oh, this one's good. The nice thing about this build is I can, if I hit him with a spell, I'll do that type of damage as well, which is also nice. Okay. Just gotta be careful of that, but overall, it feels like this is definitely something that could be useful going forward. In a way that it might not have been earlier, so that's good. Always a good change to make some things relevant that might not have been otherwise. Again, these little... I, I am on a chaos level, so it's not like these are just regular enemies that you find in the game. But even so, they're not super difficult. We'd have to take this through the chaos chamber and really see how it works. Maybe get some badass enemies. Okay, I can see this being useful for sure. The throw reload is obviously very good for this build as well. Not so bad. 